So, hello everyone and welcome to Cloud Native Portland. Um, this is an official meetup of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And as such, we are subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Um, so please be kind. Um, my name is Josh Burkus. Um, I'm the main organizer of this meetup. Uh, before we get started with the main presentation, so a few announcements. Um, first off is for anybody who wasn't paying attention, um, KubeCon Europe um, is actually a purely online event. Um, registration for it is still open. It is vastly more affordable than the in-person KubeCon Europe would have been. I think it's $75 to attend. Um, the, um, and, um, uh, that will be happening starting on August 17th uh, for you to dial in and listen to. It'll be a little annoying because of the time zone, because you'll have a choice between getting up at four or missing sessions. But um, it's much more accessible to many people who would not have been able to fly to Amsterdam for it. Um, since now, nobody can fly to Amsterdam. Um, for that matter, um, the KubeCon Boston um, call for presentations has been uh, extended. Um, so you actually still have two days to get in your proposal if you wanted to speak for that. Um, it is still to be determined whether or not that event is happening in person in Boston or whether it will also be an online event. Um, and that pretty much depends on where the state of Massachusetts is in terms of venues being open for large groups of people. Um, the um, for other news, um, one of the things that's been going on is, uh, I don't know if people are familiar, but the CNCF um, supplies infrastructure for, supplies support for, um, provides a place to collect and discover a whole large group of projects. Um, and these projects actually have this sort of three phase thing, depending on where they are, both in their project development and their level of involvement in the CNCF. Um, and so the sort of introductory project thing is called the sandbox. Um, then there's incubating for projects that are more dedicated to the CNCF and have more of their paperwork together. Um, and then there's graduated for large mature projects. Um, and this week, uh, the Technical Operating Committee inducted a whole bunch of new projects into uh, the CNCF in the sandbox level. Um, and this includes things like KUDO that we had a talk on before um, and the operator management framework um, and a couple of other things. And then one of the projects that um, is now in the CNCF sandbox is Captain. Uh, pronounced sort of like Captain, but with an accent. Um, and our speaker today, Jürgen Etzelstorfer, um, is one of the major contributors, project leaders for Captain. Um, he works at Dynatrace, um, and he is going to be presenting on scaling your Prometheus installation or solving problems in scaling Prometheus. Um, the um, Jürgen has said that um, he'll take questions anytime um, during the presentation. Um, the, this presentation is being recorded. So if you don't want your voice to be in the recording or you're somewhere where you can't easily use your microphone, feel free to ask questions in the chat um, and I will read them out loud um, so that you can answer them. Um, otherwise, um, go ahead and um, ask your question at an appropriate pause in the presentation. So with all of that said, Jürgen, do you wanna go ahead and take it away? Sure, thanks. Uh, I hope my internet will be fine he, because Zoom says my internet connection is unstable, but uh, we just had a chat before, uh, everything was working fine. So I hope um, we will survive uh, this here. Uh, I'm sharing my screen now, uh, I hope it. Is it already shared? It doesn't say. I think it is. Yes, shared. you're sharing. Okay, great. Um, then it's just the Zoom controls. 
locking me here and uh, yeah, um, thanks for, for, the, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Jürgen. Uh, I will be uh, giving you a little bit of introduction into the Captain project, but also giving you a little bit of what we learned uh, when we dealt with um, kind of working together with uh, partners, working together with um, open, uh, adopters, basically they want to try out Captain in their Prometheus ecosystem. Um, we learned a couple of things. Um, we tried to overcome some challenges, I would say, and I just want to present this. Before I want to uh, jump in here, um, I also want to show you what uh, Josh already mentioned, that Captain was accepted into the sandbox. And it's basically just uh, like a couple of hours ago, this comment was made on our initial PR um, on our um, CNCF sandbox proposal. So we are quite happy that uh, it finally uh, got accepted for, uh, for a sandbox project together with a bunch of others. Um, still, that's very exciting news for us. And uh, yeah, let me go back to my presentation and kick it off here. So um, yeah, my name is Jürgen. I work for a company called Dynatrace. We are, uh, I would say, originating from the APM space, application performance monitoring and the management. Um, but we have been working or uh, in the innovation lab on an open source project called Captain for now more than a half, uh, one and a half years. Um, and I already get the chance uh, earlier this year, and I think it was around January timeframe, uh, to, to visit the Portland meetup and to talk a little bit about the Captain project. And uh, this time uh, I'm very uh, excited to talk a little bit more about how to integrate Captain into your Prometheus ecosystem and how to solve some challenges there. Um, if you want to follow along the, the Captain project, what's going on in the Captain project, uh, want to check out maybe our source. Uh, I linked everything here. I will also paste the link to the slides at the end of my presentation. So you can also uh, take a look there and make all the links that I put in there. Uh, they are clickable so you can also have them uh, and just click, click uh, on those. Uh, yeah, if you want to take a look uh, in the meantime, it's captain.sh, it's our website. And on GitHub, it's called Captain. Um, yeah, well, so um, there are some, there's something in the chat, no. Uh, so uh, if there are any questions, um, feel free to just uh, jump in. Um, since it's a meetup, uh, I'm very open to um, basically discussing and I'm also really, I would really appreciate if you can uh, either during the presentation or at the end, uh, just uh, leave some comments. Uh, what do you like about the project or if it's something that you, uh, if it's really solving your problems probably, or uh, if it's, if you have some other like um, uh, problems or some other challenges that uh, you would like to solve. And probably it's something that it's also part of our vision, but we have not yet um, done it. So um, yeah, let's just have a chat and let's just discuss. Um, I will propose some solutions to some challenges that we have discovered. And what we saw from um, people that are using Captain, but or, or just other folks that are using Prometheus and Grafana, um, what they actually want is they want to have like their dashboards, they want to have their, um, of course, the monitoring, they want to have the alerts, everything set up, but actually it should be in a kind of automated way. Um, you don't want to do all the setup each time again, every time uh, you have new applications, you, you have new microservices that you uh, put on your um, Kubernetes cluster, each time you have new workloads that you are migrating from, let's say, some legacy system to Kubernetes, you don't want to have to fight with all the configuration and these kind of things over and over again. And we kind of saw some challenges and try to propose some solutions for this. Um, the talk or like my, my presentation is, is structured in this kind of four, five blocks. Uh, I would start with a very, very basic kind of Kubernetes environment, how, which, which building blocks we actually have and how we want to, uh, to manage them. And then I will um, talk a little bit about the most frequent challenges we saw. Uh, and uh, I will propose some solutions for it. And then at the end, I want to talk a little bit about CAPT and how we are actually dealing with those um, challenges uh, in CAPT. 
I've also written a blog about this and I would say the presentation is based on the blog uh, and you can find it on Medium. Uh, I put in here the friends link. So um, I know that Medium has this kind of paywall for some of the articles, but with a friends link, you're always uh, good to go and uh, you're able to, to read this and not affecting your uh, free tier or whatever on Medium. So uh, let's start with a very, very simplified um, Kubernetes uh, environment or actually, um, uh, yeah, Kubernetes Prometheus ecosystem environment. Um, what we do have is we have some Kubernetes application cluster. We are running some workload on Kubernetes in our pods and they are exposing the metrics on some endpoint. Prometheus is fetching those, uh, storing those, uh, and uh, we are also exposing uh, those metrics via our Grafana dashboards. And we have a couple of folks that are basically more interested in the dashboards. We have a couple of folks that are more interested in configuring Prometheus. We even might have more Prometheus clusters. Um, in this talk, I'm not talking about how to scale Prometheus from a technical perspective, how to make it high available um, with uh, having multiple clusters. There are a couple of projects and uh, I learned um, there is something like uh, Thanos, Cortex, Victoria Metrics. I think a couple of those are also um, have been mentioned also in the CNCF meetings. Um, but I, I made a note, I just want to mention those. They are doing a great job. It's, but they are tackling this from the perspective of how to make uh, Prometheus uh, highly, availability, uh, highly available. And I will be talking a little bit about, about more how to scale Prometheus in an organization where you are scaling all your workloads. So just this as a kind of a disclaimer in the, in the beginning. Well, so um, let's start. Uh, we need a lot of configuration. We need probably a, a, a lot of YAML and uh, that brings us already to the first challenge. Um, you have all these different kinds of configuration files. You have scrape jobs, you have alerting rules. Uh, they both go actually into Prometheus, but it's different components. So the one is more the Prometheus with the scrape jobs and uh, probably some recording rules. You have the alert manager with your alerting. You have most often in this kind of ecosystem, you're also most often having Grafana as your dashboarding tool and you have a dashboarding configurations in some kind of JSON format. The other formats are most often YAML. Nevertheless, you need to kind of configure all the systems and you need a way that the configuration you're actually applying, that you can version it. Uh, and uh, of course, that you know which version is actually now applied in your production environments. So the problem comes up how to version all these configurations, how to keep it in sync, that the version you have basically in your Git repository matches the version that is actually really applied in your Prometheus. So if you want to roll back the configuration, you know which version is actually running and to which version you want to roll back. And one potential solution here is to, to use really a GitOps approach. So instead of having all this configuration being applied directly to your Prometheus and Alert Manager and all these other components, you basically put the configuration to your Git repository and you, sorry, and you have a, an operator basically listening for changes in the Git repository and then uh, applying these changes to, to all these different components as it's uh, sketched here. Um, with this, uh, you can really store everything in Git and with a GitOps approach, everything, let's say when it's merged into a master, when it's, uh, the PR is accepted, uh, you have, when, when everything you would normally do with the code, you can also do it with configuration. And that also means there are no more manual edits in production anymore because you just commit it to your Git repository, you ask for a review, you approve it, and then it's when, when it, once it's merged, it will be also applied to your production monitoring. Um, so in this case, you're kind of mitigating the problem that uh, they might drift out of sync that your scrape job, uh, the one you have in your Git is not applied on your Prometheus because you probably you, you forgot to, to sync it or these kind of things. Nevertheless, you still have to write all those configuration and uh, it's a lot of YAML, it's a lot of configuration to actually write. Um, what we've seen is uh, there are a couple of um, uh, 
teams that are responsible for the different kinds of um, configuration that are needed. They are, of course, working together. So it's not only the operations team, but they are working together closely with development. Uh, then you have um, some, some uh, performance engineers, probably they are looking um, at the dashboard. So they also might um, work with others, um, but still you have to, to write all these um, configurations. So uh, what we have discovered, and I think it's a great idea, um, to make use of code generators. There are a couple of code generators out there, uh, and I've listed a couple of them also in the reference section at the end of the deck. Um, and basically, you are feeding them with some input data, um, probably just with the name uh, of your service or of some endpoints, uh, some, let's say, uh, quality metrics, um, and they are generating the scrape jobs or alerting rules for you or even dashboards. Uh, so you can make use of all these code generators, code generators, and they are then building all these configurations for you. And also with the solution to the first problem, you can then put these uh, configurations in your Git repository, apply it to the operator and uh, apply it to your um, production environments. Um, so with this, uh, you can already save a lot of time by using all these code generators. One problem uh, that might arise is that those configuration files are not in sync and they might drift out of sync after time. So uh, let's say your scrape jobs uh, are generated by one code generator but your dashboard configurations, they are written by completely different code generators. So whenever you change one file, doesn't necessarily mean the other file is updated as well. Um, and of course, they might need different input parameters and these kind of things. So having too many different code generators might, um, might cause some issues. And what we think might be a good idea to, to base the input to these code generators to base it on some well-established concepts. And uh, we have seen that when it comes to monitoring, when it comes to running workloads in production and making sure everything's up and running all the time, the SRE community um, is, uh, is, is a very good uh, input or uh, like their concepts are a very good input for uh, these kind of configurations. And they basically define what you want to have instead of how it's done. And we think it might be sufficient to just define what you want to have and you can actually generate a lot of how it is done. You might need to change um, some very specific parts, but you should be able with what you want to have with it is with a good description and declarative description what you want to do to uh, define a lot of things how it is done and i think that matches also um the basic the base concept of kubernetes where you basically define in your yaml the kind of a desired state and kubernetes will figure out how it is done so with this i want to introduce captain how we are doing this um, how we are trying to automate the configuration of Prometheus and Grafana, but also what we can uh, then uh, also generate uh, since we have all this input and uh, we can use it for automated quality gates in our continuous delivery pipelines and also for automated operations to trigger some remediation actions. Um, actually, the last part of the automated operations, I won't touch into detail in this presentation, but for the first uh, two parts, I want to give you a little bit more insights. So um, the captain description, and uh, I think that's also the description that we um, pitched to the CNCF when we um, applied for uh, the CNCF uh, sandbox um, stage um, a couple of uh, months ago is that Captain is an event-based control plane for continuous delivery and automated operations for cloud-native applications. So actually, we are not saying we are a configuration management tool, but we are an event-based control plane. So what does it mean? It's basically Captain lives in your Kubernetes cluster as a bunch of microservices, uh, and the, we are listening for events. And whenever you send events to Captain, we can then distribute the events to the rest, to the different services that are responsible for acting upon these events. 
and it was with the main our main goal was to um, make continuous delivery easier and also um, more robust by implementing or integrating automated quality gates um, so we can whenever you send an event to captain captain triggers off an internal workflow and we trigger different tools by sending them uh, events and waiting for the uh, the respond uh, response and then uh, this in this um, way we can control the workflow let's say uh, and for uh, it's also an event based control plane for automated automated operations since uh, we can listen for uh, alerts from the Prometheus alert manager or from other uh, monitoring solutions uh, and uh, we can automatically react on those alerting tools or um, not alerting tools but on those alerts that are sent as an event to captain and we can trigger some actions to remediate the problem that is basically or remediate the issue that is basically the, the, um, the initiator for those events that have been sent uh, to captain. Um, for the events, we are using cloud events. That's also a CNCF project and an open standard. So it's really easy to integrate with captain since we're building upon this open standard and just using uh, cloud events. In a little bit more detail in the still high level, uh, but our conceptual architecture is that we have captain as our autonomous cloud control plane and Captain is configured with a file that we call the shipyard file. And uh, Josh already mentioned in the beginning, um, Captain, it's uh, like Captain, but with an accent. Uh, so we have a lot of these nautic terms uh, in, in, in Captain. So we have our shipyard that basically builds the environment. That's a description of an environment, uh, how many stages, for example, uh, one would uh, like to um, manage with Captain, like a dev hardening and production stage. These kind of things we write down in the shipyard file or the testing strategies or the deployment strategies. This is defined in the shipyard file. And then we have another, um, we, we have some other files, but we also have uh, all the services that are integrating with Captain. So for example, we have our GitOps services, like our, uh, everything in, in uh, Captain is stored in the Git repository and we can link the Git repository to GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, uh, all these kind of uh, other um, public Git vendors, let's say. Um, we are integrating with uh, other tools for continuous delivery like uh, Jenkins, Excel release. Um, we are integrating with uh, tools for test automation, for chat ops, and of course, with for observability and uh, monitoring with Prometheus and for dashboarding with Grafana. So Grafana and Prometheus we, um, we have dedicated services for them. They are basically listening for input from Captain and then translating the cloud event from Captain into some API calls or into something else um, for um, Grafana and for Prometheus. So in this way, Captain is acting as a control plane, waiting for events and then distributing the events to the different tools and waiting for the response and then uh, triggering probably the next step. Um, and Captain can also manage your artifacts in your Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, uh, I've just sketched it here that we have like three different environments, um, basically in the logic separation of namespaces. Um, so we can see a couple of our services in our dev namespace, and we might have uh, direct deployments or blue green deployments um, set up with Captain for our staging and uh, production namespaces. We are also using um, Istio behind the scenes for uh, traffic shifting between blue and green versions. Uh, and uh, we are also in the process of um, building a canary releases where we can then um, make a, a, a more fine grained shift of traffic uh, in your environments with Istio. So for those configuration files uh, I mentioned earlier, we are building upon um, SRE best practices, I would say. And uh, if, I, if I start here at the very bottom of the, of the slides, let me just get rid of my Zoom controls. Yeah. Uh, there, is a, there is an excellent video uh, on, on YouTube uh, that you can watch uh, explaining the concepts of SLIs, SLOs, and SLAs. Uh, what I want to focus on for today is only SLIs and SLOs. 
And it's a very, I would say it's a very simple, but yet very powerful concept. And SLI is basically a measurable metric, uh, something like an error rate of some specific service, like a login service. So we can measure the error rate of our login requests. That's an SLI, that's a service level indicator. It indicates quality of a service. But we have not yet defined an objective. So the objective would say this one service level indicator or error rate must be less than 2%. And uh, we can also assign to it like um, it has to be less than 2% within the last five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Uh, and we can go one step further and we can uh, actually define service level agreements. These are more business agreements between a consumer and a provider where we actually define which service level agreement a service has to satisfy. Um, in Captain, we basically focus on the first two concepts and we, we put those concepts into a declarative description. And for service level indicators, um, I would say they are very much reusable. So like something like an error rate, throughput uh, or um, the response time or duration, uh, these are things that are basically defined by the red metrics um, and we already provide a standardized template. So each service that is managed by Captain, you automatically kind of get all the met red metrics for this service because Captain has this uh, built-in libraries how to query um, those um, metrics for different uh, monitoring solutions like Prometheus or like Dynatrix. So let me just give you a very um, simple uh, and short example. We have our SLIs. Uh, that's actually a concrete SLI file of Captain. So we are defining our indicators with the name error rate, the number of database calls, uh, JVM memory used. Uh, and that's kind of the, the key and the value would be the concrete call to, uh, to the, the monitoring provider. So in this case, it's, I think it's some uh, Dynatrace uh, query, uh, but you can imagine this could be also a, a prompt QL here. Um, in the next step, we are defining a service level objective upon uh, our indicators. And with this, having this, uh, those two parts um, separated from uh, each other and basically abstracted, uh, we can reuse all those SLIs in our objective file. So if you want to switch from one monitoring solution to the other, it's very easy because you don't have to rewrite your SLO files. You just have to define an SLI file, which basically defines how to query the, the, the metrics with the new data provider. And it's not only uh, those monitoring tools that are providing the data, but it's also some other tools like testing tools, like JMeter metrics or NeoLoad metrics, these kind of things you can also query or metrics from your um, uh, service mesh, uh, these kind of things. So um, we basically can define an objective based upon our service level indicators. And uh, whenever you execute uh, or you, you uh, tell Captain to configure your monitoring tool, Captain can then uh, take this information and reach out to the monitoring tool in this case Let's say it's a Captain Configure Monitoring Prometheus. It will send this data to Prometheus, uh, also to Grafana if the Grafana tool is listening for these kind of events. If it's in, if it's like um, if it should execute some actions upon those events, um, they will interpret the cloud event and then execute what uh, whatever the job is. So, for example, for a Grafana uh, for our Grafana integration, the job is to create some dashboards and to make like. A, um, to make the dashboards and uh, alerts for the new onboarded services. And for Prometheus, it's that we want to have our scrape jobs, our recording rules, our alerting rules, these kind of things. Uh, for other tools, there might be other things to do, but with this abstraction from uh, the cloud event to the um, service provider and then to the service itself, uh, we, can, we can basically achieve this. 
And the cool thing is we can also reuse the same files and it's basically they already live in the Git repository of Captain and we can use them in Captain quality gates. So this is something not related to scaling Prometheus or to onboarding more services, but it's more related to um, each time you're shipping a new artifact. Uh, and when I say shipping a new artifact, we basically mean each time you're deploying a new version of a, a microservice in your, in your pods uh, or in your Kubernetes cluster. So it's basically you tell Captain to start an evaluation upon the new version uh, of your um, service or just, uh, let's say, maybe just for the last 30 minutes of your, um, of your service running in production. You just want to, to trigger an evaluation. And this evaluation is based on the service level objective file and the service level objective file is again reaching out to the indicators file to find the exact calls to the tools that has to be made. So um, basically you tell Captain to start an evaluation. Captain will query those SLI providers and we can say Prometheus is an SLI provider because it provides the data that's written and defined in the SLI file uh, it will fetch the, um, the SLIs, it will evaluate and score the SLIs. Um, we can see here on the left hand side some criteria. So whenever we pass a criteria, we get a full point. If we cannot pass a criteria, but we can, um, we can satisfy the warning criteria, we get half the points. And in this case, um, or in, 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 in this um, methodology, I'd say, um, we can generate a, a total score and the total score um, will then give us a, basically a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Uh, it's also defined here, um, the left hand side uh, of our SLO file. It's defined here what is a total score we have to reach for this quality gate to pass. Or if it's less, then Captain will evaluate the quality gate as a fail. And it's very easy to write this kind of quality gates and Captain has the built-in logic to reach out to the different data providers, fetch the data and then evaluate the data and give you back a total score uh, if this evaluation was successful or not. And you can imagine you can use this evaluation automatically in all of your CD uh, pipelines and you can use the same data for configuring Prometheus and configuring your Grafana, for example. So how does it work when you want to get started with Captain? Basically, first thing is you create a project with this kind of shipyard file. So in this case, it's a shipyard file for two stages. The first is called stage, the second is called prod. Um, and you would just define a deployment strategy and a testing strategy. And Captain would know um, how to distribute the events uh, once they come in based on their testing strategy and deployment strategies and what to do. So uh, Captain is configured in the sense we are working with GitHub, we are using Helm for deployment, we are using uh, Slack for our chat ops approach, we are testing with Chimeter, we have our um, automation scripts with Captain and ServiceNow, and we are um, having our observing component or like our data provider uh, with Prometheus. So um, once the Captain create project is executed, Captain is configuring the Git repository, is making some branches in the Git repository and providing or setting up uh, the initial namespaces in our Kubernetes cluster. In the next step, you would onboard a service to your project. So the project is basically, let's say, your whole application and the service is one microservice of this application. We often use uh, the project of a, a sock shop or the hipster shop uh, or whatever shop uh, i would say you can imagine um, and then you have like a login service a shopping cart service uh, a payment service these kind of things so you would onboard those services with a help chart since we're using helm for deployment and captain will then um, uh, put the files in the respective uh, git branches so we have we can follow the GitOps approach and in the next step you can configure the monitoring uh, tool with the data we already have, but also you can uh, define more data like the SLI file. You can override the SLI file. Captain comes with a built-in library, but you can override it 
And uh, of course, the SLO file, it's something you would also have to add to Captain. So then you can reach out to Captain to configure your monitoring provider for some services and projects, and will basically trigger the configuration of Prometheus and Grafana. And in the final step, you can deploy with Captain. You can deploy your microservices with Captain. Uh, and here you basically override the previous image you already had in your um, uh, running in your clusters. Uh, and you will override this, you will send the event to Captain. Captain will start by overriding this, deploying a new version in a blue-green deployment um, if, you, if you have set it up or in a direct deployment by just um, basically replacing the previous version of the pods. It will execute some tests. Again, the tests that have been defined in the shipyard file. So in this case, we have defined some performance tests. It will then trigger the quality gate, do the scoring of the quality gate, and decide if it should be promoted to the next stage or if it should be rolled back to the previous version. In this case, we want to promote it to the next stage. So we also do the same workflow in our production environment. Again, do a blue-green deployment. In this case, in, uh, when you uh, remember, we have not defined a testing stage or some testing in our um, production environment. So Captain will skip the testing part. And I would say in production, we usually have our end users that are basically testing uh, our software. So we don't need some artificial JMeta tests, some load tests, because our end users are basically hitting our services with traffic. So they are, let's say, testing. Um, Captain can then, again, evaluate after like an hour or two, uh, if the version that we now put into production is up and running, and if everything's fine, which it will generate a score, and we can decide if we want to keep it or roll it back. So this cloud native delivery and uh, quality gates uh, are a, a fundamental part of Captain, and everything's based on those SRE concepts of SLI files and SLO files. Um, for the Prometheus integration, as I um, uh, said earlier, we have two different services. The first service is uh, for actually really configuring Prometheus uh, and configuring also the Prometheus alert manager and being able to receive events from the alert manager uh, and uh, translating them into a payload that can also be understood by Captain. So it's basically, it will receive uh, um, uh, an alert from the alert manager and will translate it into a cloud event that can be processed internally by Captain. And we have our second service, which is the Prometheus SLI service. And this one is responsible for fetching all the metrics from Prometheus. Um, and then we have a third service, which is not yet officially released, um, but it's, uh, it already exists. And this is the Grafana service. And that's the service that is basically um, responsible for creating the dashboards based on the same, on the same files. So it's, uh, it, it will read the same files and will create the dashboards for you. Um, as said, I have um, uh, built this uh, presentation um, based on, uh, on a blog I've written. Um, so feel free to, to check it out here. Uh, I've just listed a couple of uh, code generators here. They, I, I think they are all great. They are all doing a, a great job. It just depends what you need uh, and uh, make sure to check them out if you, if you feel uh, the urge to generate some code for your Prometheus or Grafana dashboards. Uh, if you want to have it based on some SRE files, then also um, you can check out Captain and uh, make sure to, to, to give it a try to see how, how we are approaching this, I would say. Uh, and I've also linked uh, pres uh, the presentation on the red map, but I think it's a great uh, resource um, which uh, metrics really count or like are, are the basic metrics uh, that you should consider for your uh, microservices. Uh, with this, I wanted to invite to, to join our Captain community. Um, we have our Git repository here. Um, if you like what we're doing or if you just want to follow along, uh, you can star us. Um, we, we are always happy to see, to, to see this uh, appreciation from the community. Um, we have our, our um, just uh, newly introduced our Google group um, as a mailing list. 
and uh, yeah, the captain community basically uh, will show you all the links. Uh, we also host uh, community meetings, so if you want to to keep in touch with uh, the captain developers or want to take a look what's uh, what, what's up and coming, um, then make sure to to check it out here. Um, and we also have Slack, but it's not listed here. It's uh, I think it's listed in the community. So with this, uh, I want to thank you, and I um, yeah, I will hope for some. I mean, I'm happy to answer some questions, uh, and yeah, please let me know if these are some uh, solutions uh, that you would feel could overcome some challenges in your um, ecosystems. Okay, our first question is from Jose. Jose, you can actually ask this out loud if you want to unmute yourself. Um, yeah. So can. Can you use a third-party tool such as Helm or Spinnaker to perform the deployment of the microservice, or do you have to use Captain? Uh, you can use others. Um, so what we see, what actually um, Captain is using in the standard installation, Captain is using Helm for the deployment. Um, we have not yet um, seen an integration with Spinnaker. Um, you can absolutely do it with Spinnaker. What we have seen is uh, a lot of integration with Jenkins. So it's basically we are sending uh, events to Jenkins and Jenkins is doing the deployments uh, and telling about the finished deployment and the captain is then triggering the tests uh, and the test tools are telling captain they've finished and captain is then triggering the evaluation of the tests. So absolutely, it's uh, absolutely possible. The only thing, uh, those tools, they need to understand or the integration just needs to understand um, a, a cloud event. Do we have other questions? What I can do in the meantime, I will put the link to the slides into the chat. Um, someone's interested. There you go. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop sharing. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, any more questions from uh, our meetup members? Okay, well, thank you everybody, er, very much, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Jurgen. Thank you. Uh, I do not have July's online meetup scheduled yet. Um, per the order of the governor, we will be doing these online at least through October, um, if not longer. Um, uh, so watch meetup.com and my Twitter feed um, for information on when the next uh, online meetup is. Thanks a lot, folks. Thanks, everyone.